Hey team, this is what we need to know. If we're going to practice Hatha Yoga correctly, more importantly, if we're teachers, we're going to teach it correctly. These are the fundamentals that we need to know. These are the A, Bs, and Cs of Hatha Yoga. We need to know why we practice it. We need to know how to practice it. We need to know what we do when we practice it. So let's have a quick look at those things. Then we can honor Hatha Yoga in the way that it deserves to be honored as this incredible science of self-empowerment that also provides us with the opportunity to move beyond self-empowerment, beyond this world, and touch in on that part of ourself that is transcendent. Call it soul, call it spirit. In yoga, we call it Purusha, the part of our being that is always at rest, eternal, infinite, indestructible. Imagine a system that could simultaneously make us super creatively potent, robust and strong in every single way, at mind level, energy level, body level, creative forces of nature, and at the same time provide us with real strategies to take time out from this world and rest in the part of ourself that is eternally free. That deserves honoring. So let's do it correctly. Here's what we need to know why we practice Hatha Yoga. We practice Hatha Yoga because of the situation laid out so exquisitely well in Samkhya philosophy. Samkhya means to enumerate or to calculate. What are we calculating? We are calculating the process of the descent of consciousness into matter via these differing degrees of density individuated by mind, energy, and matter or body. So consciousness born of a noble spiritual desire. So the soul desires to experience some aspect of itself. So it manifests itself into this world, into this vehicle. This vehicle is here to provide consciousness with the experience that it desires to have, this, this, this noble mission. So we manifest for ourselves a mind, an exquisite mind, perfectly calibrated, to the truth of who we are and what we seek to achieve. Same at the energy body level and then at the physical body. This body is a perfect vehicle for consciousness in regard to achieving this dharma, this, this mission, this spiritual mission. But because of these degrees of densification, we forget who we are. We forget where we came from. We forget what we're here to achieve, dharmically speaking. So this is where we have Hatha Yoga as the perfect back engineering or mirror opposite for the descent of consciousness. Hatha Yoga is the ascent of consciousness, working with these same levels of matter or body, energy, and mind at the level of matter and body, we work with asana to strengthen the body, to purify the body, but ultimately to transcend it. How do we do that? How do we practice asana in a way that is truly healing and evolutionary? We have to do it in two ways. One, to create mental stability. That's the first orientation of practicing asana. Create mental stability because if our mind isn't stable, forget about this ascension process. It's off the table. How do we make our mind steady using asana as the springboard? Easy. You do less poses. You hold them for longer. You increase your level of calm. You decrease your level of fidgeting. And you invite yourself, you challenge yourself to rest more and more into witness consciousness as you hold the long asanas. That's first orientation of asana. Second orientation of asana is to work, to begin the work at the level of the energy body. How does asana shape energy? We really need to know this as practitioners and even more so as teachers, that there are six pose categories and every pose can fit into one of these six categories. Forward folds, twists, back bends, laterals, extensions or inversions. And these six categories shape our subtle being in the following ways. Every pose will shape our values, our doshas, our gunas, our chakras, our nervous system, and our general energetics. Six 
different functions in entirely unique ways. So the way that Aradamatsi and Drasana shapes our values and gunas and doshas and nervous system and energetics, chakras, is completely different to the way that Dhanurasana will do it. Or Utkatasana or any other pose. Those six pose categories will determine the way that we shape ourselves energetically. We need to know this stuff. Otherwise, what we're doing is just guesswork, and that can go either way. Once we understand how to make the mind stable with asana and work with energy specifically based on these six pose categories, then we heal, strengthen, and ultimately transcend the physical body, and we can move up to that next layer of densification, or in this, in this direction, it's the next layer of subtlety, where we work with pranayama, we work with breath retention, kumbhaka, we work with bandha, and ultimately mudra, to sensitize ourselves to energy, to help us to tap into that subtle world. We feel the vibrations in our fingertips and our hands, and ultimately through this work, we start to feel the different flows of energies and the different points of energy. We become fluent in the lang language of energy. Once we are fluent, then we can start to direct energy. And that's where this hatha process starts to come into play. This fusion of the sun and the moon aspects, this liberation of the, the kundalini force inside of us the uncoiling of our dormant power and the expansion of our true creative power, the, the prana shakti. But that's not the end. This is just how we heal, strengthen, and ultimately transcend the energy level and to arrive at the level of the mind where we work with different meditative, uh, meditative techniques, kriya yoga, Mantra Japa meditation, Raja Yoga to heal the mind, strengthen the mind, purify the mind, clarify the mind, and then ultimately transcend the mind so that we can rest in that part of ourself that is transcendent. Swatmarama says in verse number one of Hatha Yoga Pradipika, salutations to Lord Shiva, primordial guru who instructed Hatha Yoga, which is a light to those who want to ascend the staircase and touch in on that highest form, experience of yoga, Raja Yoga, meditative absorption into the light of the self, which is the gateway, the higher mind, the light of the Higher mind is the gateway to our true form, our Svarupa Purusha, the one who is always at rest. So that's the why and the how. The what we practice is a bigger conversation. That is the conversation that we want to have with you during the 50-hour training, starting Wednesday night, going for one week. That's the conversation. It, it needs a week minimum to provide you with all of the little details of what to practice so that we can make this journey and make ourselves more extraordinary versions of ourselves in the process, which is the, the, the dual power of Hatha Yoga. It makes us more extraordinary versions of ourselves as we make this ascent and ultimately move beyond this human form and rest in that part of ourself that is always free. We need a week to do that. So if you're interested to come and practice with us and learn the, the why, the how, and the what of true Hatha Yoga, Wednesday night we start with an intro lecture, which will be this one, magnified 10, 15 times, two hour lecture. Uh, and then we go for three days straight, eight until 12, two hour break, two until six. Sunday is a day of rest. And then we come back and finish off with three days strong, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week, same timings. So if you're in the mood to take your practice and take your teaching to that next level, then we would be honored and overjoyed and thrilled, Emma and myself, to invite you into the crew and share these life-changing, practice-changing 
world changing because you know the world needs attention right now and that's only going to happen at the individual level when we as individuals step into our truth and we step into that higher part of our being and start living in a way that we were always meant to live with that higher connection so yeah it's world changing stuff so if you want to get into some of that stuff come into the studio before Wednesday afternoon, register, or you can do it online as well via the website. Okay, any questions, please reach out here, or you can email me at octavio at the practice, Lots of love.